Hey everybody, Sarah here. I'm Forest Wife, and today I wanted to walk you all through how to color grade your images using Lightroom. Now, the goal of all of this is that you get an image that evokes mood and actually makes the viewer feel what you felt in that scene or what you want them to feel. So let's start with this photo here. So this one is a really good playground for us because most everything is neutral. We've got white snow and a little bit of blue sky to add a little bit of interest. So this is not that exciting of a photo, but it's a great example for me to show you what I mean here. So every time I'm gonna open a new photo, I'm gonna go through the light or the basic panel when I start off my editing process. And with this one, I'm just gonna kind of pull down um, and add a little bit of contrast here because I've got a little bit of um, depth that I'm lacking. Um, now, I always will go through the light panel and the basic panel and make this uh, look good overall, even though you can see here, I've actually increased the saturation through the process and that's okay. I know it's gonna get worse before it gets better. I can actually adjust that as I move down in my editing panels. So then I'm gonna move on to curves. So I'm gonna actually drag down my shadows just a little bit and keep my highlights nice and bright, maybe even pull my whitest white down so that it clips just a smidge so that I don't have an overpowering bright white. Then I'm gonna move on down and correct my white balance because that's a significant problem in this photo. Um, I'm gonna actually click on a part of the sun or the snow that's in shade and that should give me a nice warm look. So I really like the look of that. Then I can come down in my color mixer and this is really one of the most powerful tools in all of Lightroom and I love using it. It would be my favorite by far. Um, so if you have a to tone that you want to adjust, let's say I wanted to adjust the uh, aqua or the blue because that's gonna be that sky here. I can adjust that just by dragging my sliders left and right. I feel like moving toward a little bit more of a cyan direction works well for this sky, especially because it complements that golden hue of the mountain, um, which I might even emphasize a little bit using yellow and orange. Um, so it's kind of creating a little bit of a teal and orange vibe here, which is a very common cinematic look, um, especially in the YouTube world. So if this is something that you guys like to achieve, you can get a little bit closer by accentuating what you already have using HS. Cell. Then if you wanna add color that doesn't already exist in your frame, you're gonna to wanna to use your color grading panel. Now this panel is extremely powerful. It has the opportunity to essentially add a wash of color on top of the image that's not already there. So we're not adjusting tones that exist in the photo. We're adding a layer of color on top of it. So we can actually selectively add this color based on whether it's just applying to the shadow tones in your photos, the dark tones, just applying to highlights or just applying to the midtones. Now, this is really helpful because we can be even more precise about having a subtle effect to the frame. So I'm gonna start out with actually using my shadows. Now, where I like to start is just clicking on this center circle and dragging it toward the tone that I want to add to my shadows. So I can move this around and as it moves, it's going to end up in a different part of my circle, uh, adjusting the color as it moves around the color wheel. Now, I actually like a slightly more like reddish tone in the, uh, uh, shadows of this photo. And if I let my cursor go, it's gonna leave it here. Now, if I wanna move the color after that, I can click on this outside circle and start moving that around. And if I wanna adjust how much of the uh, adjustment is coming through on the photo, how much color is being added, I can drag the center, air, uh, center circle in and out from the circle. And that's essentially adjusting saturation. So I kinda like this red undertone here. It's a little bit interesting, a little bit nostalgic. Um, and then I can actually come into my highlights and add a little bit of extra warmth if I wanted to. Now, if I'm adjusting my highlights at all, nine times out of 10, I'm moving it in the yellow or golden light direction because this is what we naturally see with sunlight. It will start to look really weird really fast if you move your highlights in any other direction. However, a great example of this being done in something you may have seen is Ozark. Ozark was shot with essentially adding cyan to the frame in camera. And so you uh, can create a look like that by moving your highlights toward the color that you're trying to um, uh, emphasize in your frame. So now let's move this photo into to, um, Ozark land, right? And it's suddenly gonna have more um, cyan, maybe in the shadows as well. And it's a dark in Ozark, right? So it's gonna have a little bit more of this vibe, right? Um, now, does that look great <laughs> as a photo? I don't think so. Um, but does it give a vibe of like kind of an eerie moodiness? Yes, it does. Um, so that's what they were going for when they created that show. So now I'm gonna move my highlights back to where I want them to be, a little bit of extra warmth. Um, and depending on how far we go, it can add a little bit of that golden glow. Now the midtones, this will adjust that foreground quite a bit. So I can basically move this around 
around to whatever I feel like looks the most interesting. If I move this more toward that bluish cyan direction, it's gonna look maybe a little bit cross-processed, which was a common technique used with film photography. And this can be a really interesting artistic way to add color to your frame. I actually kind of like adding a little bit of blue because that is what I might naturally see um, with that shaded area. And I feel like it actually emphasizes the lightness and the goldness of the Alpen glow on the top. So moving forward, um, this is another example that I can use. And this one, uh, I would uh, of course go through and edit through my basic or my light panel, get this looking pretty good here. I feel like that's pretty close. Just get a nice little range. Um, and then I can move on down to that color panel and see, or color grading panel, and see what I can add here. Now, uh, mid-tones is gonna affect a significant portion of this photo because notice how pretty much everything's gray. So this is also what you can be thinking about with color grading is how much of my photo is one of these circles, right? Um, and most of this photo is in the mid-tones. So that's where I'm gonna see the greatest effect. However, if I want it to be subtle, I could intentionally just focus on shadows or highlights. So I, again, like to be subtle, I'm gonna go with shadows Shadows. And I'm actually gonna pull the shadows toward that kind of bluer, uh, slightly uh, cyan blue direction because I like how that gives it a little bit of a moodier vibe that I don't already have in the scene. And it's just in the shadows, right? So in the deepest, darkest clouds and that foreground adds a little bit of interest. And then of course I could accentuate that warm glow with moving those highlights toward the warm side. Midtones, of course, is gonna have a heavier hand. Notice how that really changes the look of the photo. But because of the way this photo was um, captured, it almost doesn't feel super significant because it could just be a weird color of the sunset, right? So you can really change the look of this image depending on how you move those midtones. So here we've got another photo that might've been captured in Ozark, right? We've got super cyan sort of look, we got green midtones, and then we can also scooch it over to like the pink side and suddenly we've got a postcard, right? With romantic lighting um, in a place where you might want to visit. We can move down and, oh wow, that's the most intense sunset I've ever seen, right? It's got purple hues, that's really fascinating. Um, and you can totally change the look of your photograph. So this is something you can explore, this is something you can play with, and it's a really powerful tool. Now one more I wanna give you an example with uh, because skin tones are something you need to pay attention to with color grading. So I pulled this self-portrait that I took a long time ago and I don't think I've even used it for anything yet um, so that I can use this as an example to show you what this does to skin tones. So obviously I've got a little bit of bright highlights on my face. I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit um, so that I don't have to worry about blowing out my cheek. Um, so I'm just gonna drag my highlights back a little bit and maybe bring up my shadows so that we have a little bit more depth in the shadow areas of the photo. And then I'm gonna move on down to color grading just to show you this example. If I want to adjust the highlights in the frame, notice this is mostly gonna adjust the white door that I'm leaning against and the skin tones. So that's gonna to start to look really weird really fast if I pick any color besides a warm light, which is what we would expect for this scene. So I could emphasize the warmth by adding just a little bit of warmth here, and I do like that. Um, I also don't necessarily need to. I think the neutral tone light looks fine as well, um, but that would be where I would put it. I could also come in and adjust my shadows here. Now the shadows are gonna have a huge impact, right? Pretty much everything else in the photo is shadow with the way that the light was in this scene. So I actually kind of feel like if I move this toward a little bit more of a reddish direction, this is gonna have a really interesting romantic feel. And that's gonna give people that um, uh, soft sort of feminine feeling which works for this specific photo. If I wanna move mid-tones, there's not a ton of mid-tones here. Um, I feel like it kind of adds color into my hair and I don't like what that does, which again is why I d tend to not touch the mid-tone slider as much. So as a kind of um, tool here, you're just gonna wanna make sure that when you're working with skin tones, you do not significantly alter the look of that skin tone unless it's a color wash over an entire movie scene, right? Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that people look like people. So that would be my only caution to you here. So with the highlights, if I move here, does my skin look natural? No. Um, so I'm just gonna keep an eye out for that when I'm working with people. Moving on to one other quick example here. Uh, you'll notice that in this self-portrait, my legs are 
different shade. Um, and so they already look like a little bit dead, um, my hands too. So this is something that I'm gonna wanna pay attention to if I'm going to add adjustments. So if I were to add blue to the shadows, notice how that significantly affects my legs, right? Now, could I adjust this with a uh, local adjustment with a brush brushing on my legs and solving that problem? You betcha. And that might be the best way to handle it because it's the only skin tone that's in shade. Um, in addition, if I wanted to add a more warm or reddish tone to the high, to the um, shadows, you won't really notice that. And in fact, it kind of solves some of that problem. So again, it depends on how you want to use this tool, but keep an eye out for skin tones, uh, keep an eye out for pushing these a little bit too far. And then if you wanna really finesse your selection here, you do have options for blending and balance. Now, I actually don't really touch the blend blending slider. It's essentially blending um, your adjustment with the neighboring adjustment, mid-tones, shadows, or highlights and the balance slider is actually pushing your color grading toward the shadows adjustment or the highlights adjustment. Now, I generally don't use that as well because I find that I can achieve that uh, by just increasing or decreasing my shadow adjustment or my highlight adjustment. So if I move this to the left, it's gonna focus on um, using more of my shadows uh, color, and if I move it to the right, it's gonna focus on using more of my highlights color. So you can see that here with a pretty extreme example. All right, everyone, so that sums up this video. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like. If you wanna subscribe, we'd love it. Um, and if you have any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below.